Okay, so we're going to go through the setups for the three problems on the conservation of energy sheet. Here's number one. We already drew the picture. It's an oscillating pendulum. It's drawn back to an angle of 25.5 degrees from the vertical at time one, and it's released and allowed to oscillate. Our goal is to figure out the velocity at the lowest point. So we start with a picture with time one and time two clearly shown on it. Step two is if there's a change in height, we label our zero height. So for this one, we would want the initial, I'm sorry, the lowest height, H2, to be zero. And so when we do a conservation of energy problem, we're going to look at the speed and potential energy at each of the two times. So at time one, we have a height here. So we need to figure out what this height is here. We're not given H, but we are given L, the length of the string, and we're given theta. So if you think of it in terms of geometry, if we have a length of side L, and then we draw it back. That doesn't change the length of it. Here's our angle theta. And so if we want to figure out this height here, the amount that the first position is above the second, we need to know the length of this side of the triangle. Because then L minus this equals H. Since L is the hypotenuse and our angle theta is here, this side is L cos theta because it's adjacent. So H equals L minus L cos theta. That's very helpful for a pendulum. It's almost always going to be how it's set up. And so if H2 is 0, H1 is L minus L cos theta. At time 1, it's not moving, it's released, and we're looking for the velocity at the bottom. Once you have a clear picture and zero height, you're going to write your givens, and then we're going to write our whole conservation of energy equation and cross out things we don't need. So that's the whole thing, and let's cross out anything that's zero. At time one, it's not moving, and so there's no velocity. At time one, it is a height above zero. At time one, there's no spring. Uh, is there any work done by non-conservative force, such as friction? No, there's not. There's only the weight and the tension, which is perpendicular. Is it moving at time two? Yes. Is there a height at time two? No. Is there a spring at time two? No. And so we're left with UG1 equals T2. So in other words, mg h1 equals 1 half mv2 squared. And so our m's cancel. Multiply both sides by 2. Take the square root of both sides. v2 equals square root of 2gh. Now h isn't given, but we did already determine that it's equal to l minus l cos theta. And so there we have our equation for number one.